Okay, we've done about one of these every single week, and honestly, it's my favorite video to make. I love looking at these what-if scenarios, especially as we get more information about these rookies and these landing spots become a little more realistic. But before we get into this video, I have to show off this beautiful sign made by Girthquake, Noah G. Y'all know him in the chat. He may or may not have made the most beautiful sign above it as well. But if you go down there and subscribe to the channel, we'll be that much closer to be able to flip that over to 26,000. Drop a like on the video if you're already subscribed. And if you want to get in a draft with us this offseason, of course, you can find the link to Underdog Fantasy down there in the description of the video as well as the comment section. When you sign up to Underdog with promo code FLOCK, you can draft with us in the live stream, draft in the public lobby, whatever the hell you're wanting to do. They just launched a million-dollar best ball tournament available in damn near every state, and I've been drafting the hell out of those teams. But I think that should be about it. Let's go through. Let's dive into this mock draft. Starting off, numero uno. No surprise to anybody. Bijan Robinson. Here he goes to the Detroit Lions pick 18. This is more common every draft that I'm seeing is the Lions taking a running back near the top of the draft. I don't want it to happen. I, I, I truly don't. Okay. I, I want DeAndre Swift to be the guy. I want the Lions to commit to him long term. But it is a possibility that they decide, okay, well, DeAndre Swift was selected by a different coaching staff. DeAndre Swift doesn't do exactly what we are looking for in a three-down player. We don't know how much longer we have Jamal Williams, even if we go through and re-sign him this offseason. It doesn't seem that likely, but I don't know. I'm not in charge of the Lions. And if they were to take Bijan, I think that immediately tells us he's the guy of the future. He's a generational running back prospect, regardless of the landing spot. Now, second pick in this draft, I'm going to go Bryce Young. I actually like the landing spot. The Colts trade up for him with the first overall pick. Now, Young doesn't have the size. He doesn't have the rushing upside as some of the other quarterbacks in this draft class. But I know we're boring to say it. I am looking at the landing spots for these QBs. I don't want them going to historically dysfunctional franchises. Miss me with the Baker Mayfield in Cleveland. Miss me with the Zach Wilson as a New York Jet. I don't want to be taking rookie quarterbacks going to those teams that are dysfunctional from top to bottom. So going to the Colts, this is a team that has history of being able to go through and progress quarterbacks, even if they had some of the most generational quarterback prospects of all time. But even with the new coaching staff coming in, I'd like the landing spot a little bit more than some of these other teams at the very top. You have JT, you have Michael Pittman. And clearly, he would have a ton of job security if he goes at one. Now, at two, we're going to go C.J. Stroud. I know we were just talking about trying to avoid historically inept franchises, which the Houston Texans have proven to be. But I think Houston has the assets to possibly turn it around. You'll see later on in this draft that they decide to take a wide receiver at pick 12 as well, which will help Stroud a ton. Now, Four is where we mix it up. Four is where things get very interesting. And the other two quarterbacks are top 10 picks in this mock draft. But at the same time, Jordan Addison lands to the Kansas City Chiefs. The Chiefs trade up to pick 19 to select Jordan Addison. And he would immediately be the number one wide receiver on this roster. Now, we don't know if this is going to be a team that decides to re-sign Juju Smith-Schuster. Maybe they want to pair up the USC boys. But almost regardless... In my mind, Addison's the number two target behind a 34-year-old Travis Kelsey. I've been drafting the hell out of Travis Kelsey in best ball redraft leagues over the past few years, but this season, he will be 34. Addison right now is the wide receiver two for me going into the NFL draft behind JSN, but he is still a tier one player, and this would just be the dream landing spot. I mean... I, I don't even think we have to sell you on it. Now, going over to our next spot, we're going to go Anthony Richardson at seven. We'll throw Richardson and Will Levis in here together. So, Will Levis is going right after. Richardson goes seven. Levis goes six in this NFL mock draft. So, the draft capital leaning Levis. NFL talent evaluators are telling us maybe he's going to be better. But, going back to those landing spots, you're getting Richardson with the Raiders. Where you have a great run game, you'll see that they actually take another great offensive weapon later on in this. And on top of it, you have Devontae Adams. 
and you have all the rushing upside in the world. I think Anthony Richardson will lead this quarterback class in rushing yards and rushing touchdowns. We know it's a cheat code in fantasy. By no means is he Lamar Jackson. By no means is he Justin Fields with his rushing upside. But in my mind, he can still easily get to 35 rushing yards per game. I wouldn't be surprised if we get seven, eight rushing touchdowns in an individual season, which is phenomenal for fantasy. Will Levis going at six here. I mean, with Levis... I know some people have been saying that he could potentially be the number one guy off the board in the NFL draft. Like I said, I'm really going to be listening to the NFL draft capital here. He falls to six in this one, going to Carolina where, I mean, you're playing alongside DJ Moore. You do get another wide receiver added on to this Carolina Panthers roster later in this draft. I don't know. I'd prefer Richardson. In my mind, it's a better landing spot and more rushing upside. But our next spot... We're going to go JSN. I know usually we have JSN ahead of Jordan Addison, and it's an incredible landing spot for Njigba as well. He's going to the New York Giants. Now, obviously, a lot of people are saying, okay, well, Mason, JSN can't be the wide receiver one. He is a slot guy. To be honest with you, I don't care. Maybe he won't be the wide receiver one in terms of real-life NFL added on value, if he's not going to go out there and stretch NFL defenses, if he's going to play underneath and really just win with amounting a ton of volume, that's what we want in fantasy football, okay? It's not a slight to call someone a slot wide receiver anymore. In my mind, it's almost a good thing. You're telling me this guy's going to be a bad option because the only way he wins is underneath generating a crap ton of targets. Sign me up for a player like that. He'd be the number one weapon besides Saquon Barkley the second he stepped in that locker room. Now, our next guy will be interesting. I am going to go Quentin Johnston here. This is a wide receiver that goes to the Houston Texans at 12. He would be the number one wide receiver for C.J. Stroud. Clearly, you don't have a lot of competition, even if we want to root for John Mechie. And I'm really hoping John Mechie has a phenomenal NFL career. If you look at the way that John Mechie plays the position, honestly, I think that they would complement each other nicely. I mean, obviously, in this draft, uh, Johnston goes as the highest wide receiver from an NFL draft capital point of view. I don't know. I, I think it, you're just having to bet that Johnston is going to be good and Stroud's going to be good. If either one of those things were to be off, then obviously it's a bad pick. Now, our next spot will be Jameer Gibbs. I don't know what to make with this because Jameer Gibbs goes pick 38 to the Raiders. A couple things. I could easily see this making sense from an NFL perspective. Like you have Josh Jacobs, maybe you transition him to being more so that first and second down running back. I mean, use Jameer Gibbs, how DeAndre Swift was used this past season, even if we didn't love it. Hell, it made a lot of sense from a fantasy football perspective. Detroit had a phenomenal offense. And maybe you deploy Jacobs into that Jamal Williams role and give Jameer Gibbs the DeAndre Swift role. It would be interesting, though, because in this draft as well, Richardson's going to the Raiders. I don't know how often a quarterback that has the ability to scramble is going to be wanting to dump off to the passing down running back. It's the Lamar Jackson dilemma that we always talk about with the running backs in Baltimore not drawing any targets. So it'd be an interesting landing spot for Jameer Gibbs. Obviously, the majority of drafts, he's going higher than this. I think, I think we can safely say it's a bad landing spot, but you still have to take him here at nine almost regardless. Now, I think we have a significant teardrop after this. Right afterwards, we're going to go Zach Charbonnet, who's going to the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, obviously, we have some stuff up in the air. We don't know the situation with Miles Sanders. I know a lot of people are saying, you know what? Miles Sanders is not going to be back with Philadelphia. Philadelphia is tired of the fumbling issue. Can it gain? Well, looks pretty damn good. I think it would make a lot of sense for the Eagles to, instead of going out there and taking a running back round one, I know a lot of people wanted them to take Bijan Robinson. You don't need to do it. You can afford to do it because the roster is phenomenal. If they were to instead get Zach Charbonnet in the third round like they do here, and deploy him in a committee alongside Kenneth Gainwell, move on from Miles Sanders that way, I think it would make a ton of sense from an NFL perspective. But at the end of the day, Charbonnet would be a committee back on a team that the quarterback's going to steal a ton of rushing touchdowns. Now, our next guy will be Tajay Spears, who actually goes the pick after the NFL draft here. He goes pick 77. He finds himself with the Miami Dolphins. And with Spears, 
I think we are really going to have to look at those NFL Combine numbers, have a better idea of his overall profile, but we know a few things, and we know that he gets draft capital here, and he goes to a depth chart where there's no competition. Miami literally has nobody signed this next season. He would step in, and presumably if this were to occur, he would be the starting running back. I don't think he is the same quality player as a Charbonnet, and that's why we're going to have Zach Charbonnet ahead of him still, but it's interesting. And now our next guy, Zay Flowers finds himself in a nasty spot. Zay Flowers going to the Baltimore Ravens, pick 30. Clearly the Ravens need a wide receiver. I think this makes a lot of sense from an NFL standpoint, but at the same time, it would be horrendous from a fantasy football standpoint because I'm not a big Bateman guy, but Bateman will be there this next year. Mark Andrews is going to be there this next year. So Zay Flowers, in my mind, is almost immediately at best the second option in the receiving game behind Mark Andrews, and he'll be competing for that mark with Rashad Bateman. Now, of course, you can be the number two option in an offense and still have a ton of value. Look at how excited we are about Jordan Addison, who goes to the Kansas City Chiefs. We're putting him here at four compared to Zay Flowers down here at 12. The difference is the Chiefs will have all the passing volume in the world, and the Baltimore Ravens will have none. So if you're not going to be a top dog in an offense that doesn't have a lot of volume to go around, it's hard to get excited about you. Now, Josh Downs will be our next player. And honestly, I kind of want to put Josh Downs higher than this because I love the pro prospect. Very similar in my mind to a JSN. Why, not necessarily from a fantasy football outlook perspective, but I think that this will be a player that's almost better from a fantasy football perspective than he will be from an NFL perspective. A lot of NFL guys are saying Josh Downs isn't going to get the job done because he's too small. He plays close to the line of scrimmage. He's going to win in the slot. And while, yeah, that may not be great from an NFL perspective, fantasy is going to be phenomenal. Give me all the volume in the world. And also, we have to remember, with the Panthers here, you do get Will Levis in this draft. So we can assume that the quarterback position will be better. But you still have DJ Moore. He signed the extension this past offseason. I love DJ Moore. I think DJ Moore would be the unquestioned alpha wide receiver one here. So very similar to what we were talking about with the Quentin Johnston earlier on, where you would have to not only get your wide receiver draft pick right, but at the same time, the rookie quarterback would have to hit as well. So we're taking Josh Downs here. Not only does he have to be a productive player and he has to be a good prospect, so does Will Levis. And we don't know about those. So in my mind, there's a little more volatility. We are going to have him down here. Now, our next wide receiver, Jalen Hyatt, 21, goes to the Los Angeles Chargers. Phenomenal landing spot. Make a ton of sense. The Chargers need speed. They need to stretch NFL defenses. So guys like Austin Eckler, Mike Williams have more space, space to work with underneath. That's exactly what the Chargers need. But at the same time, while those speedy wide receivers are going to get pushed up NFL draft boards, as they always do, they're never good in fantasy. Like, I know everybody always says, oh, this guy's the next Deshaun Jackson. Trust me. I won my first fantasy football championship back with Chip Kelly, Nick Foles, Deshaun McCoy, Deshaun Jackson. I, I, I love trying to go out there and try to find the next Deshaun. He's a uh, once-in-a-generation player. It's very rare you're going to find that field-stretching wide receiver with fantasy football production. I think Hyatt will be good for the Chargers if this was the landing spot, but bad for fantasy. He's not going to get volume. Now, we're going to go with a couple tight ends right after this. We're going to go Dalton Kincaid and Michael Mayer. So, Mayer is supposed to be the better tight end. So I really have no idea. But if we're going to be looking at the landing spots between the two players, you have Dalton Kincaid going to the Cincinnati Bengals. I mean, Daniel Jeremiah just loves Dalton Kincaid. I'm really excited to see the official testing numbers with them. What's actually surprising, and we showed this with historical analysis, is the NFL combine matters for running back. And it matters for tight end. I didn't know that whatsoever, but apparently athleticism matters a ton for the tight end position. And it's much more difficult than just that wide receiver where the only thing we have to look at is market share adjusted production given the context they're playing in their offense. But anyway, going back to this, before the NFL Combine, before we have the official testing points, I'm going to go Kincaid because this Cincinnati Bengals landing spot would be phenomenal. I think the Jags landing spot would be good as well. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to bet on rookie tight ends, but if you're getting first round NFL draft capital here, in my mind, in two of the best landing spots you could ask for, it's hard not to get excited about those guys. 
Now, our next guy will be a wild card pick. He could be Malik Willis, but he could be a quarterback one in fantasy. We're going to go Hendon Hooker. Goes to the New Orleans Saints, pick 71. Now, I've used this example a million times. If you look across all my dynasty leagues, I have a decent amount of Jalen Hurts. And the reason for this isn't because I went and traded for Jalen Hurts this last offseason and I knew he was going to be leading to the, the Philadelphia Eagles to the Super Bowl. I didn't know that. But what I knew is back in 2020 in Dynasty Rookie Drafts, he was a quarterback we were able to get at the end of the second round that had a ton of rushing upside. So I didn't know if he was going to be good for NFL purposes. I had no idea. But I knew if he were to start at the NFL level, he would be good for fantasy football purposes given his rushing upside that he possessed. Hidden Hooker is like a worse version of that, less NFL draft capital going to the New Orleans Saints, a worse landing spot. Oh no, we'll take a swing. All, all these other running backs are just so hard to evaluate before we have the NFL Combine. I don't even want to talk about their profiles because it's so difficult to figure anything out. We have Devin A. Chan, a running back that was hyper-efficient at Texas A&M, but kind of a gimmicky player. I mean, this is a running back that's a phenomenal pass catcher. We don't necessarily know what the size is going to be like. He goes to the Dallas Cowboys, pick 90. I mean, hell, we don't really know the situation with Pollard. In my mind, he just looks like a much, 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 much worse version of Tony Pollard. I mean, for Devin, it would be great if they let go of Pollard and then drafted him to play alongside Ezekiel Elliott. But in my mind, I just have no idea why they would do that. Then you have Tank Bigsby going 94 to the Baltimore Ravens. I mean, he'd be just stepping into a running back by committee where the running backs won't get targeted out of the backfield, where the quarterback will vulture rushing touchdowns inside the five-yard line. Don't know if we love that. We have Zach Evans going to the Cardinals. This is an interesting spot. James Conner actually has the guaranteed contract this next season where you know James Conner is the starter. I'm not really worried about that whatsoever. Zach Evans never really proved anything in college. A player that had a ton of pedigree going in, a player that was hyper efficient and has looked phenomenal at times like if you look at his highlight tape you'd assume that Zach Evans like the running back three in this class but at the same time he's just incredibly inconsistent so it's difficult to know exactly what we have there I just want the NFL combine now 91 we're going to be going with the wide receiver that actually fell in this draft and goes behind a decent amount of these other names but at the same time I just love the landing spot Kayshawn Boutte goes pick 91 to the Buffalo Bills I think he could almost come in and pseudo replace Gabriel Davis. I think they would play together. I think it would almost be a wide receiver by committee. We know how many routes run at the wide receiver position are available in Buffalo every single season. I think he is a player that has a very low floor. He got worse essentially every single season at LSU. But if you go back to his freshman year and combine it with the high school pedigree he had coming out, does look to be a wide receiver with a lot of upside and a phenomenal landing spot. Not much draft capital, but also he could be literally nothing by year two. Now, Tyler Scott going pick 46 to the New England Patriots. To be honest with you, I mean, the last mock draft we saw had Tyler Scott going in the second round as well. And I was sitting there going, okay, who the hell is this guy? What's going on? Played alongside Alec Pierce at Cincinnati. I don't think he is a special player. He looks like he's just a college stat piler at a small squad. I don't know. I don't like it. I like the landing spot. I just don't like the player. And the Patriots have been horrible at developing wide receivers. 72, Marvin Mims, Tennessee Titans. Very similar to Keishon Boutte, where this is a wide receiver that people were so excited about in Debbie Leagues. I mean, after his rookie season, people thought Marvin Mims was going to be a phenomenal player at the NFL level. And then just never proves anything down the stretch and has consistently fallen down these boards. Now, Rasheed Rice goes pick 58 to the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, obviously, you're playing behind C.D. Lamb. I actually think Gallup is going to be a little bit better this next season. I think maybe the issue with Michael Gallup was just we are too early betting on him coming back from the torn ACL. And then Cedric Tillman actually went pick 64 to the Chicago Bears. What am I supposed to say? This is a team that was the worst passing offense since 2009. Even if they get significantly better, they will still be a very bad passing offense. I don't like the prospect. So it's like it's like Zay Jones going to Baltimore, but just worse all around. Now, I think that's all I got for y'all. If y'all enjoy it, please go down there, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel so we can change that little plaque over there to 26. And also, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them down there in the comment section. 
Thank you again. I really do appreciate you. And I really hope you have a great day.